Whether you like liquid glass or you're not a big fan of it, it is what we are working with at the moment. It will eventually release everything that's currently in beta into the world, and then all of our apps are going to get liquid glass sooner or later. So it makes sense for us to really try and figure out what kind of components can we build, what kind of components should we build, and how do we achieve all these cool things. If you're interested in learning about that, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to check out the books in the description down below. Now with that out of the way, let's dig straight into Xcode and the simulator to see which component we're going to build today, because we're going to build something where we group multiple buttons together into a single glass shape. A great way for us to explore what's available in a new UI paradigm like Liquid Glass is always to just look at what Apple is doing. So looking at apps like Maps, which has a lot of custom UI, is always a good starting point to see what we might want to try in our own apps. And we can actually see in Maps that Apple has implemented Liquid Glass thoroughly. They have new UI components that I don't think we even have access to. And so it's easy to assume that if they have this drawer right here, we can't trivially build that. So obviously all of this is custom and private. But really we, we can build a whole bunch of these things ourselves. Actually all of these buttons are not that hard to build. And this component right here is one that caught my attention. We have toolbars where we can do this. We have toolbars where we can have two elements together and have them act as a union. But toolbars are always horizontal. This is a vertical toolbar. So again, immediately it's quite easy to think to yourself, well, if this is a vertical toolbar, that's not something we can build, but we can actually do it. So let's go ahead in this video and rebuild that maps component right here and build our own sort of stacked glass toolbar view. To do that, what we're going to do is use this sample project that I have, and we're going to build it from scratch. So what I'll do as the very first thing is I'll just add a V stack to it. I'll add two buttons to it. They won't have any action. They'll use a label. I have a label view uh, with a title of car and a system image of car. And I'll use the icon only label style so that we only see that icon. And I'll put a second button here to get that uh, location effect. So we have location, location like this. So that's our two buttons straight out of the gate. Um, doesn't look great. We should actually maybe apply a little bit of padding here to make sure we're not in the corner too much. And we probably want to go ahead and style these buttons a little bit more so that they start looking like our target, which is again, this component right here. We can see that the car is filled. Uh, so we probably want to switch to a car dot fill if one is available and turns out there actually is. We want our foreground color for the car to become black because the car in Apple's example is also black. Foreground style color dot black, there we go. And then we keep blue for our location. It also kind of looks to me like they made these icons bold. Um, it's a bit of a detail, but you know, if we are applying view modifiers anyway, why not go for bold as well? There's also a background on these labels. So we're actually just going to go on ahead and give them a background. And I'm going to start them off with maybe circle dot fill color dot white, like this might be your first guess. Uh, we are going to want to add some padding here to make sure that our background isn't overlapping. There we go, now we're getting somewhere and we'll do the same thing for our location. There we go. Now we can actually see that these components don't appear to be the exact same width. Um, well, maybe, maybe they are. Let's assume they are, they look similar enough. So now we have two buttons uh, with some padding on them and, and some of everything. Now we need to make them liquid glass. To do that, we can actually apply a glass effect to our buttons. And we're immediately going to see that this approach that we took isn't going to properly work because, well, 
as you can see here, there is some glass around this, but it's really not at all what we want this to be. Instead of a glass effect, we can also use a button style of glass. And I think that for now, actually, that's going to get us where we want to go. We do have our own background here right now that we want to get rid of. So we'll just do that to see what everything ends up looking like. And this actually doesn't look too horrible. I do want to get rid of my uh, padding here. Actually, I say it doesn't look too horrible, but there is some weirdness going on here. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. So now we have our two buttons here, the black car and the um, location icon. We do want to have some tinting here. We do want to keep that white color. And so what we can actually do is uh, apply a tint to our glass. We'll actually need to, hold on here, I'm making a mistake here. We need to switch to a glass prominent button style and then we can apply a tint. And that tint can be color white, for example. And now we have a white glass button here. I do think that white is a little bit too white, so we're going to use an opacity modifier here to get some opacity. And we'll apply the exact same button style to our location button. And notice that uh, by making it white here, um, it becomes a little bit hard to read, so we're going to give our label a foreground style here of color.blue. So now we actually have everything that we need to look quite similar to Apple's components. So how do we join these two together? That's the real question right now. What we can actually do is put them in a glass effect container so that they become part of the same container. Now we can use glass union. To do that, we need a namespace. A namespace will allow us to sort of namespace together elements and all elements with the same identifier and the same namespace will be considered part of the same glass shape. So if I apply dot glass effect union to my um, view, and I give an ID of, for example, uh, menu, and I provide the namespace that I just created, and I give this to a second element, then all effects that are the same should be applied, uh, should become part of the same glass effect union. Now, this isn't working right now. And that's because there is a little bit of a tricky detail about glass effect container that is very easy to forget. Glass effect container doesn't just want elements to be in the same container. They also want the elements to have sort of a shared parent. So in this case, my V stack. What's quite interesting is that we still have our shared V stack here, but this doesn't count for our glass effect container for some reason. So we need to have container stack and then our UI components. And there we have it, a clone of what Apple did here for Maps. It doesn't look quite the same, uh, it's slightly different. That's because our element seems a bit more cramped. We can actually do to fix that is set up a padding here. So a little bit of a top padding, maybe four, and a little bit of a bottom padding, also maybe four. And it kind of gets us a little bit closer to that effect. And maybe we apply six or eight. We can play around with that until we get to where we want to be. So that's how you can replicate that Apple Maps uh, menu. By using a glass union, we are able to unify multiple shapes with the same glass style into a single shape. Note that it is an important detail that both elements that we want to group have the same glass style. If I make one uh, glass prominent and the other glass, they're not going to be merged. If I give them different colors even, they're not going to be merged. So the glass effect needs to be the exact same in order for this to work. But this is a really cool way to create custom components that look like they might be really hard to achieve, 
but actually with liquid glass, it's quite easy to achieve these things. So you can build your own vertical toolbars now using Glass Effect Union, VStack, and Glass Effect Container. If you enjoyed learning about this, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these kinds of videos, and make sure to support my books if you want this channel to become even better. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.